Hi, I'm Josh Mitchell. I'm Open Force Field's science communicator. Open Force Field is an initiative to build and publish molecular mechanics force fields in the open and distribute tools to fit and use them. We observed that there's no universal format for distributing force field parameters, except maybe big tables in the back of supplemental data, PDFs, which is not ideal. We've developed the Smirnoff format to fill that gap. The Smirnoff format, unlike other force field formats, includes all the information you need to parameterize a chemical system. It includes both the chemistry to which parameters should be applied and the parameters themselves. It also completely specifies the potential energy function, rather than just providing a bunch of parameters to fit into a functional form that you hopefully already know. It explicitly includes things like cutoff distances, long range electrostatic treatments, mixing functions and units. Finally, it works across different MD engines. The goal is not to just come up with a Smirnoff native MD engine, but to actually allow people to distribute a single force field format that they can use in any MD engine. But we know how standards work. So let's make this worth it. How do we do this? Smirnoff accomplishes these goals by first defining a map from chemistry to a potential energy function, including all the runtime details you need to reproduce it. Long range non-bonded treatments, functional forms, the works. Chemistry is expressed as a smirk string, a pattern of atoms and bonds rather than with atom types. The parameters are assigned following a hierarchy of parameter specificity, with general parameters at the top of the file and specific parameters coming after. Together, these two rules grant a lot of freedom to decide how to construct a force field. Finally, instead of only supporting one MD engine, OpenFF provides tools that export fully prepared systems in a number of different formats. We'll go into detail on each of these points later on. So what does a Smirnoff force field look like? A Smirnoff force field is written in standard XML. If you know HTML, this probably looks very familiar. You have tags and angle brackets, and each tag has a name that describes its semantics, but they can also have attributes for customization. Tags can be nested to embed information in a particular context. This is a sample of the Sage 2.1.0 force fields Smirnoff file. It starts with some information about what version of Smirnoff it's written in and how you should interpret the aromaticity. Then you have some metadata about who wrote the force field and on what date. And then finally, the actual force field parameters. Parameters are organized into sections. And the first section in Sage is the constraints. Each parameter includes a smirks pattern and then an ID and some physical values as appropriate. Quick primer on smirks. Atoms are represented in square brackets. An elemental symbol or a hash symbol followed by an atomic number specifies the element, or an asterisk can represent any element. A number after a colon lets us give a particular atom a numerical identifier, which we use to identify the atoms we actually want to apply our parameters to. Dashes, equal signs, and hashes between atoms represent single, double, and triple bonds. Then there are a bunch of other optional symbols and letters specifying physical properties of atoms and bonds, and a few punctuation marks defining some simple Boolean logic. The first constraint here applies to any single bond between a hydrogen and any other atom. There's no physical value for the constraint length, so this just constrains bond lengths for bonds to hydrogen. The second and third constraints do have physical values for their distances. If you ignore the atom identifiers, you can see both of these smirks represent identical patterns. A hydrogen atom singly bonded to an oxygen, which in turn is singly bonded to another hydrogen. These physical properties say that the oxygen is neutrally charged, bonded to exactly two hydrogens, and not bonded to anything else. So that's water. Constraints apply to the distances between two atoms, but this smirks has three atoms. The atom identifiers colon 1 and colon 2 specify that the constraint applies to the distance between the first hydrogen and the oxygen in the first parameter and between the hydrogens in the second parameter. These are the constraints in the TIP 3P water model. These two lines define the rigid geometry of water in SAGE. Notice how physical values in Smirnoff are given with explicit units. This makes the force field unambiguous and easier to read and allows publishers to use their own preferred unit system. The remaining sections specify bonds, angles, proper and improper torsions, van der Waals intermolecular forces, and then electrostatics and atomic particle charges. 
which can be from either a library of smurts parameters or automatically computed by a quantum chemistry method. Each parameter has an indexed smurx, an ID, and some physical parameter values. Most sections also specify some physical values for a collection of parameters. For instance, the bonded potentials all specify the functional form of the force, and the non-bonded potentials explicitly state cutoffs, exclusions, and long-range treatments. This is a lot more information than is in most MD engine force field formats. A lot of this information is often a run parameter rather than part of the force field. In Shmurnov, the force field specifies a map from a chemistry to a unique potential energy function. That's the Smirnoff format in a nutshell. OpenFF maintains a full specification, link in the description. Now we're going to run through the notebook and show you a bit of how this works in code. The notebook we're running through is linked in the description. I'd recommend running it on your local computer using the provided Condor environment, but it's available on Google Colab as well. We use the OpenFF toolkit to work with Smirnoff force fields. The toolkit works like a wrapper around other cheminformatics tools like RDKit and Amber tools to give a unified, easy to use, safety oriented user interface. The OpenFF 2.2.0 OFFXML file is distributed with the OpenFF force fields conda package, and you can publish your own force fields in the same way. The force field class stores an in memory representation of that map, ready to be applied to a chemical system. Sage is the name for the 2.x line of OpenFF force fields. We can look at the text of the Sage force field and we see that it's familiar from the earlier section. We version all of our force fields, no matter how small the change, and we always include the version number in the file name, so that if you have a record of a script that loaded a force field, you have an implicit record of exactly the parameters used in that script. The OpenFF toolkit lets us load a molecule just from a smile string. This is hexanoic acid, which we'll be playing with today. The molecule class is an in-memory representation of a particular chemical species. Think of it not as a particular computational model, but the abstract idea of this chemical, this collection of atoms and bonds. The force field is responsible for deciding how to represent it in the parameterized system. Shmurnoff works first and foremost by defining a map from chemistry to a potential energy function. That's what a Shmurnoff file is, a functional that takes a chemical description of a system and produces a potential energy function. The chemistry part of that is defined through smirks. Note that this map doesn't ever go through any atom types. Smirnoff doesn't natively do atom types. Instead, a particular atom or group of atoms in a smirks parameter is linked directly to a particular parameter. As we've seen in our example force field, this map is very complete. It includes a lot of parameters that affect the potential energy, but aren't included in most other force field formats. We can apply the Sage force field format that we grabbed earlier to hexanoic acid by creating an interchange. If a molecule is an in-memory representation of a particular chemical, then an interchange is an in-memory representation of a parameterized model of a chemical system, a chemical system that's ready to export to any supported MD engine. Creating an interchange can take a little while because we need to compute partial charges for hexanoic acid which is happening automatically via the AM1BCC method requested by the force field. Once that's done, we can specify some boundary conditions and atomic positions and compute an energy. So here it is, using Smirnoff as a map from chemistry to a potential energy function. These energies have just been calculated in real time in each of these engines and are expressed in kilojoules per mole. Interchange also lets us inspect its potential energy function. We can see what potentials are applied to this interchange by inspecting its parameter collections. We can see it's got some bonds that are treated harmonically. We've got some constraints, which are those holonomic constraints we looked at earlier. We've got bonds with the same harmonic expression, and we have torsions and non-bonded parameters as well. We can dig deeper into each collection. Let's ask, what are the parameters for all of the bonds in this interchange? Hexanoic acid just uses six different bond parameters for its 19 bonds. The first column here describes force constants in kilocalories per mole per square angstrom, and then the second column is bond lengths in angstroms. We can draw the bond lengths onto a depiction of the molecule by iterating over the bonds like this. If we want to inspect the parameters assigned to a particular bond, we can iterate as we did before, or we can just index with the atom indices. 
This is a two-step process because we don't want to duplicate the same parameter. Instead, we duplicate a potential key, which then points to the unique parameter shared by the bonds. The second pillar of Smirnoff is that chemistry is defined through smirks. Smirks is a text format for describing patterns in chemical structures. It's a bit like smiles, but for chemical groups instead of chemical species. So instead of writing a smiles and getting a unique molecule, you write a smirks and get a pattern that can potentially match many molecules. This can be a bit of a tricky mind shift. Ambiguity in smiles is interpreted into a unique molecule in a deterministic way, for instance by assuming single bonds and adding hydrogens as needed. By contrast, an ambiguous smirk string can match many molecules, which might be surprisingly different to what you expect. For that reason, Sage's smirk strings might seem to have redundant or overly specific information. Let's go over this smirks and see how it matches these molecules. Remember, atoms in smirks are given in square brackets. The capital X followed by a number is the atom's connectivity, or total number of substituents. This pattern matches a carbon atom with four substituents, singly bonded to a nitrogen with three substituents, singly bonded to a carbon with three substituents, doubly bonded to a neutral oxygen with one substituent. The first two atoms are indexed, so the smirx is labeling a bond alpha to an amide on the nitrogen side. We can see that in these two molecules, we find three matches. Let's take another look at the first bond parameter in SAGE. This smirx is a very general pattern matching any single bond between sp3 hybridized carbons. We can use the smirks to get the parameter from the bond collection directly. And if we label the atom indices of our hexanoic acid molecule, we can see that this first smirks pattern matches the first four carbon-carbon bonds. In Smirnoff, only the last, most specific smirks sets any particular parameter. If you have more than one smirks defining the same parameter on a given atom, only the last one counts. That's really powerful because it means that you can combine general force fields that have a lot of coverage with more specific parameters for more tailored chemistry. And as long as the parameters have been derived in a consistent way, they just work. When a specific parameter is available, then it gets applied. And when no specific parameter is available, the force field can automatically fall back to general parameters. This gives a lot of flexibility in how you define a force field and how you fit it in terms of how specific your parameters are. If you want to optimize a particular, say, bond length, but you're otherwise happy with generic parameters, you just define a new smirx for that bond length. No need to maintain a near duplicate atom type. Having a blanket rule that the general parameters come first means there's never a question of which smirks is more specific. We don't need any rules like a smirx with more atoms is more specific, we just put the general parameter first. Now, let's look at the case where a later parameter overrides an earlier one. So if we look at the first three bond parameters in SAGE, we can see that the second is a bond between an sp3 carbon and an sp2 carbon, and the third is between an sp3 carbon and an sp2 carbon that is part of a carbonyl group. The former is a general parameter, and the latter is a more specific parameter. Both parameters match the bond between atoms 4 and 5 of hexanoic acid. And so we can see, if we look at the force constants of the different bonds here, that the system has correctly identified that the carbon-carbon bond at the carboxylic acid has been assigned the 405 number rather than 479. Finally, instead of being tied to a molecular mechanics engine, OpenFF tools export fully prepared systems, not generic force fields. You give us a topology, a description of your chemical system, and we give you input files that you can take to your favorite MD engine. You give us a PDB that has all your water and your salt, and we will give you an OpenMM system object and coordinates for it, or a Gromax topology and grow file, and so on for Amber and Lamps. That's how we can have one force field format that works across different MD engines. Maybe one day MD engines will have their own support for Smirnoff, but we're stepping past that. If you want to adopt our force field format, you can do that now, and you don't need to wait for anything else. Here we're going to export that hexanoic acid in Sage to an OpenMM simulation. And I know we've had a lot of code up the top, but I just want to remind everyone that all the code that's actually used here is loading the smiles into a molecule and then using that force field to create an interchange.
And so although we've gone through a lot of code to demonstrate what's happening under the hood, all that's actually happened in terms of what you would do if you were using this for real is just these four lines. An entire energy minimization in OpenMM is just as long as this single cell. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an OpenMM simulation object from our interchange. We give it an integrator, and then we're going to randomly set the positions and minimize the energy. Because hexanoic acid is so simple, this actually gives us a reasonable structure, which we can visualize in 3D. That's all you need to perform an energy minimization with Smirnoff in 20 or so lines. Interchange can also export to a Gromax top file, as well as Amber and Lamps files that I haven't shown here. It constructs atom types on the fly as needed. And just to demonstrate that, here's those energy calculations again with these new coordinates. NAMD and charm support is on the roadmap, but for now you can see that Interchange is able to produce very consistent energies across MD engines. So that's how it works with a single molecule. What about a whole system? I've prepared a protein called heart type fatty acid binding protein. It's a globular protein with a PDB structure that has a bound hexanoic acid. We can load that from a PDB into a topology. A topology is a representation of an entire chemical system, a chemical topology. It's basically a collection of molecules. Like the molecule class, it represents the underlying chemical idea of a box of molecules rather than any particular model. We can apply a force field to it to create an interchange. The toolkit supports a bunch of different formats for creating molecules and topologies, but the one we'll use is the PDB. One of the goals of OpenFF tools is to ensure that the chemistry we're modeling is unambiguous. PDBs are not the best format for that. They don't always include bonds and almost never include bond orders. They rely on residue and atom names for identifying chemistry, and adherence to the standards for that identification is spotty. So our PDB loading stuff has some extra features so that we can be confident about what's going on. What we do here is we have a PDB that specifies the protein and water in the usual way, and we can detect the bonds automatically for that as long as they have the right atom and residue names. But for molecules that aren't so common, the toolkit needs to be told what chemistry to look for. We detect connectivity, but not bond order, from the connect records, and we never guess hydrogens. So there are connect records for the hexanoic acid in this PDB and explicit hydrogens for the entire system. Then the toolkit looks for patterns of atoms that match the list we give it. Here, we are combining the general SAGE force field that fits basically all of medicinal chemistry with a more specific fit for hexanoic acid and a protein force field. Because later parameters override earlier parameters, as long as we sequence compatible force fields from general to specific, we can combine them without much thought. I'll show you how I automatically fitted this hexanoic acid force field in a moment. We'll also load the AMBER FF14SB force field that's been ported to Smirnoff, so we've got a robust protein force field as well. Open force field will extend SAGE to cover proteins in the future, but for now, we just use AMBER. AMBER is considered to have compatible charges and functional forms with SAGE, but it's never been rigorously compared with it. So take appropriate care with your work until we publish a protein force field. So we combine these force fields and use them to create an interchange from the topology we loaded from the PDB. This will take a moment, partly because the AMBER port has quite a lot of parameters that must be assigned to a large topology, and partly because it has to calculate charges again for the hexanoic acid. Now we're going to do a simulation. This is very similar code to earlier. First, setting up a simulation with an integrator, then at the end of this cell, we add a DCD reporter to it to record the trajectory. Then we energy minimize and initialize velocities at the target temperature before finally running a short simulation. We're using OpenMM because it's easy in Python, but remember it's not the only engine we could use here. Once it's done, we can visualize it with NGLView. So there's our hexanoic acid wiggling away in the protein binding pocket.
OpenFF publishes a tool called Bespoke Fit to automatically run torsion drives and optimize Shmurnov force fields against them. Bespoke Fit does all sorts of clever things, like fragmenting molecules around the bond it's optimizing, automatically generating smirks patterns for the optimized torsion, and caching and reusing shared fragments when you ask it to optimize more than one molecule. In this example, for the sake of time, we're just optimizing a single torsion and we're using the XTB semi empirical method. By default, Bespoke Fit uses Psi4 to optimize torsions around all rotatable, non terminal bonds at the same level of theory used to optimize Sage in the first place. Okay, that took a little while because it had to run a lot of torsion drives, but now that it's done, let's take a look at the output. It's important to notice that the force field produced by Bespoke Fit is precisely the force field used in the optimization. This means it includes all of the input force field's parameters, not just those that apply to the final molecule. You can see here that if we take the difference between this bespoke force field and SAGE, there are two differences. The constraints have been removed because constraints wreak havoc with force field optimization, and these new torsions have been added. So this means that all the other SAGE parameters are still there. So you may want to extract out these new parameters so that they combine with other force fields in the way that you expect. Lastly, I want to briefly discuss how to produce your own Schmernal force fields. Our fancy new force field format is only so useful if it's not embraced by the community. Authoring tools are still at a very early stage. It's really easy to write a smirks pattern that's a lot less specific than you expect, and these two tools are very valuable for checking what your smirks can match or generating smirks that are specific to a particular fragment. We also develop our force fields in the open on GitHub, so you might want to look there for some inspiration. When it comes time to ship your force field, we provide a Python package entry point so that you can publish your own force fields. Just include the OFFXML files in the published package, create a function that lists the folders that store the files, and list that function in the entry point. There's an example here doing that with setup.py or pyproject.toml. If I iterate over the directories in this entry point, we can see all the force field names, and we can even find the particular force field for Sage uh, 2.11. Thanks for making it this far. Let's wrap up what we've done today. I've described the Smirnov force field format, which defines a map from arbitrary chemistry to a fully specified potential energy function. It defines chemistry through smirks patterns and always uses the last, most specific parameter so that a hierarchy of specificity can be expressed. OpenFF Interchange can take chemical topologies, apply a Smirnov force field, and then export the simulation ready system to a growing number of MD engines. And you can publish Smirnov force fields on Conda Forge right now. If you'd like to play with Shmonoff and OpenFF tools more, check out our examples page at docs.openforcefield.org, link in the description. Have fun.